what's up divas and divos so it's your girl april and you guys already know what time it is it's real talk wednesday so yes divas let's get the pop in so first of all in case you guys are like what's up with the hair hunties mm. First of all, the hair is from Yairo Hair. They did send me like three bundles, two 22s and a 20 inch, and I think it was either a 16 or 18 inch frontal. Okay, so they try to say it's a 20 inches, not 20 inches. This is 22 inches, babies. Okay, but anyway, um, they sent me this hair, not this color. It was just, you know, regular natural color, dark color you know just the natural and I decided I wanted to try something different like something different out of the norm not really out of the norm but something totally different so I went ahead and I bleached it with I think it was 40 developer yes it was 40 developer and then um, the next day I went ahead and was it the next day yes it was the next day I went ahead and colored it with Revlon's color silk and the color bright auburn so I will definitely um, if I remember link the video below because I did show step by step and as for the curl I went ahead and I first I wand curled it with my one and a half inch barrel curler um, nothing spectacular just regular curls and then once I was done finished with the curls of the, with the heat curls with the heat curls I put my flexi rods in it for two days I think it was like two days two or three days um that two days I think it was like two days that um, yeah it was two days that I can was it two days no, it was actually overnight. It was one day. So I kept the curl, the flexi rods in it for like, I want to say like 24 hours, a little bit over. Um, they're the big flexi rods. They're probably like the inch size ones. And that's it. This is how it came out. So I do like the way this looks. It looks so pretty. Um, and it actually, I did leave the dark roots. You know what I'm saying? I did leave the roots dark. Their frontal is like bomb as hell because it's so like pre-plucked and it just lays perfectly. There's two combs in the back i really do like the color a lot and i'm just gonna make another one i'm about to make another one today some kind of like similar to this but i like the way the color came out it came out so pretty um this is not like the brown it's like you know i don't know i just really really do like it so it's their virgin brazilian body wave okay and the hair is still really soft you have to definitely check out i think that's how you say their name yairo yiro it's y-i-r-r y-i-r Oh, oh, I think that's how you say it, you guys. You know, I do chop up a lot of names, and um, especially if it's like something really like out of the norm, like that's out of the norm. But their hair quality is like really, really good. Um, the hair stayed soft. It did shed a little bit when I was washing it, but you know that's to be expected. Um, it just got a little bit dry at the ends, but you know what? I do think like all units get like that, especially when you're processing the hair. So I think like for the most part, this hair really held up like something fierce like seriously and I love the way it came out it, like it reminds me of like some old glamour Hollywood kind of like look you know it's just very very pretty and like you know I love the curls in it and it's just I don't know I just really do like the curls in it the curls did fall a lot since the video so yes so pretty um other than that let me tell y'all Tuesday, which will be yesterday by the time y'all see this, I was supposed to go get um, two root canals and a filling, but I'm going Friday because oh, my lashes stuck together. I'm going Friday because they had to reschedule me um, because they just moved into a new office. Like, listen, I was kind of pissed off because my whole fucking side of my right head is just like killing me. Like, my ears were hurting, my head is hurting because my tooth is killing me. So, you try to reschedule me for like two weeks out like hell to the fucking no you're not about to do that like i was excited like who the hell i was excited to go to the dentist on tuesday which was yesterday when y'all see this and i'm like who the hell do you know that gets excited about going to get a root canal two root canals and a filling and yeah, they teeth shaved down like nobody gets excited about going to the dentist but when you in pain honey you are like definitely definitely excited like i was ready to go like stick them needles up in my motherfucking gums and and shit and let's get to going like seriously you guys know i've been going through a lot of pain with my teeth over the past like year and a half two years so this was like well overdue like let's just do this like seriously um let's just fucking do this but friday will be here before you know it so i'm like okay cool i'm i'm cool about that other than that um as for my weight you know what i'm saying um 
why did I get on the scale today and I was 194 so like it just seems like I was 192 the other day it seems like it's so hard for me to get out of the 90s like seriously I just want to get to like 180 just let me get there okay and um, I'm just finding it to be like so difficult so I mean sooner or later I will but for right now I'm just like you know, I haven't really been able to eat like that because my tooth, so the things that I am able to eat is not really what I should be eating. So, you know, I'm trying to like feed myself. And let me tell y'all. So yesterday I got up and I put on my favorite leggings, you know, one out of seven pair that I have. And I looked in the mirror. Girl, let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all bitches. Now, you know, I was like, really like, oh my God, these squats are not working. This stuff is not working for me. I was getting really, really like, kind of like, not down about it, but I was kind of like getting like, you know, I guess down about it. Okay. I was just kind of getting a little antsy and I was feeling some type of way about the squats and shit. So, you know, I kind of beefed it up and changed like my whole routine. So yesterday, you know, I really don't notice it like that. Yesterday and today, bitches, I looked in the mirror with my leggings on. And today I got these totally different leggings on that I got from Rose Gal. Girl, I was like, oh, April, your ass is sitting up a little bit higher now. And then I went in Tati's room and we was talking about some shit. And I was like, look, Tati, I was like, look, the, the squats is paying off. And she looked and she was like, your butt does look like it's sitting up higher. And then she started talking about how her face was clearing up. I was like, your face is clearing up too? Yeah. So your face is clearing up and my butt is sitting up higher. She was like, it is. Girl. A bitch is so happy, like, I'm not gonna, um, like, do backflips, because, but I'm gonna continue to work on this shit. And then the next thing I got to, you know, I got to just do these stomach the exercises too, but I'm, like, so happy about the shit. Like, what a thing to be happy about. They ass sitting up higher and getting their teeth fixed, like, seriously. Like, the things that bitches get happy about, I'm so excited about that, like, serious. But other than that, you know what I'm saying, um, I've been just chilling. Um, my my sons are like really starting to piss me off these days. Um, seriously. Um, <sighs> Woo sa for a second. Woo sa. Okay. First of all, let's woo sa. Like seriously, like it seems like when you have kids. They just continuously want to take from you. Some of them, not all of them, but I feel like when your kids are grown, they should be doing shit for themselves. Now, granted, I have five of them, three girls and two boys, and my sons are 19 and 25. Now, the 25-year-old live in New York. Now, when you need something, like you need a handout or you need some type of help, I'd be more than happy to help you. But when you start taking advantage of me, financially it starts to become like you know what hell to the no and then you got the other one that's 19 like when i tell you to do something fucking do it you i tell you shit for your own good but you just don't want to listen but still in all the same thing so it's like i feel like the boys are supposed to I thought, in my opinion, that the boys were the ones that really guard their mother and be there for their mom and overprotective over their mom and don't let nobody take advantage of them. But it seems like, in my case, they the ones that want to take advantage of me. And then my daughters are the ones that are always like making sure I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? Granted, they're 12, um, excuse me, 10, 15, and 21. And you know, sometimes I feel like a type of way with my daughter, Tati, like just be a little bit more motivated. And you know what I'm saying? That's how I be feeling straight up. But she always makes sure that I'm okay. She always makes sure that I have something to eat. She always shows her appreciation for me, the things that I do for her and everything. And she's very overprotective over me. And if she wants, if she needs anything, she'll ask, but she's always like so willing to pay me back. You know what I'm saying? And though she has my grandson, I just be like, you know, no, but she's always so willing to pay me back. And she always gives me gas money when I take her to work and et cetera, et cetera, which I appreciate her. So the only issue that I have with her is just like, just be a little bit more motivated and just clean up your room a little bit more. But as for my boys, they stay wanting to ask me for money all the time and just do shit that, you know, it's like, can you just like give me a break? Like seriously, like I 
I have been felt feeling so overwhelmed in the past few days, especially with my sons. Like I just want to block them from all my social media and my phone numbers and just tell them to leave me the fuck alone. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like my son who lives with me, the 19 year old, he got in some trouble and I had to like get him out of that trouble the other day. It's like enough is enough already. Now he gonna owe me money for getting him out the motherfucking trouble. Like, you know, you know, it's just like, it's always one thing. And it seems like when I do shit for them, they be so unappreciative. It's like, you don't show, when I say them, I'm talking about the boys. You don't show any type of appreciation because the way you come back and ask for more or the way you're acting, it doesn't really show appreciation. And I know I am not the only parent out there that feels this way. Like, you know what I'm saying? We love their, we love our children and we try to help them. But it, there comes a time when you know what? You have to just be like, no, I'm not helping you no more. Like, fuck out of here. And that's how I had to do today. Like, come on. I just got my 19 year old son out of some shit and that cost me enough okay and then here come my other son he know he knew about the issue did he just fucking facebook message me talking about 70 dollars for red lobsters because you want to take your girl out for red lobsters and you'll pay me back on wednesday i don't give a fuck about that shit you're not going out on my dime like you know i had to spaz out because Stop asking me for shit. Like I said, I am not your personal ATM machine. Stop fucking asking me for shit. Straight up. And I hate that shit. Like, but it seems like when I'm in need of something, where the fuck are them two at? Nowhere to be found. Like, I couldn't even ask them for nothing. Like, if I needed $10, the only person that I could ask out of my kids, out of my children, would be my daughter, Tati. Um, but my sons, no. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't ask them. And I get tired of them asking me all the time. Like I'm more than willing to help, but it it seems like when you with the situation is like totally different. Like you are taking advantage of the situation. You feel like I got it like that. Like step the fuck off, and you don't want to be like that with your children. But you know something, I'm done. I just had to get it off my chest real quick. So anyway, we're going to get into this real talk because, you know, I do have to go get my mumsy boo. Um, so, yes. So, first of all, if you guys already know, the email address is in the description box below. If you have an email, a situation that you would like me to read on Real Talk, you can definitely send me one to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, Real Talk. If you want to go ahead and change the names of the people that you are talking about, spilling the tea about in that in this story you can always say hey april i've changed the names you know what i'm saying if you don't i'm going to assume like you did or you didn't i might change them and i might not but nine times out of ten i always change the names i always change the names if you haven't told me that you changed them so anyway let's get into this real talk you guys okay huh? 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 All right, you guys. So, hi, April. You can call me Mary. I commend you for doing videos and opening up a part of your life to others who may be in need of advice. Not everyone can do that. April, my situation to most people may seem lazy or stupid, but it's very real and frustrating for me. I am 39 years old. I have three kids with two absentee fathers and a fiance that I have been with for three years now. My children have been struggling in school lately and my eldest two ages 16 and 12 have anger issues. My kids get along very well with my fiance who doesn't have any kids of his own. The issue is with me. I believe I have ergophobia. It's an abnormal and persistent fear of work or finding employment. I've been dealing with this for over 10 years. I've been getting hired for many jobs, working less than three or four days, and then I'll make up a reason to my boss, my boss as to why I can't work. Like saying, I'm not feeling well. I have to go to a funeral. I'm going to the hospital. This is when I'm at work, I feel extremely anxious, like I'm suffocating, like there's too many people around and I don't know what to do. I don't want to um, do something t stupid to fuck up. I feel like a complete failure. I still live with my parents because I haven't been working a steady job and can't afford to live on my own. I want to support my family and live in my own home and just be normal. Family will come over and ask, how have you been? Are you working now? Do you need help finding a job? April, I have been lying to everyone about what's going on with me. You are the only person I've told. I'm embarrassed and ashamed of myself. I'm crying as I type this. 
Back in 2015, I was going to school for computers until there was an issue with the school and they were no longer able to take students that were attending with financial aid because they were lying about their success rate and would no longer be accredited. It was supposed to be an eight month program. I did seven when I got that news and stopped going. Afterwards, everything went to hell. I stopped doing so many things. I lost two friends. I gained over 150 pounds. I just want to get back to feeling like me. I want to feel like me and feeling good about myself. Every day I just sit at home doing nothing because I've gotten so big and I don't feel comfortable in my clothes and I feel like all eyes are on me when I go outside. My fiance is very good to me, but I know I would disappoint him if I tell him what I've been lying for most of my kid's life about finding work and keeping a job. I have no motivation for anything. I don't know where to begin to even have motivation. I'm just so lost and I put up a front in front of my family so they won't ask what's wrong. You can email me or discuss this on Real Talk. Okay, so basically Mary is 39 years old she lives at home with her parents she has three children um and two of her children 12 and 16 have anger issues um she has what would they call ergophobia i hope i'm pronouncing that right which is like a fear of not finding work or keeping a job like a paranoia okay but when she does have a job she only wants to work three or four days out the week if that and she's constantly telling her boss that she's sick she's not feeling well she's got a funeral to go to she's got to go to the hospital she's got an appointment whatever it is she just feels like when she's at work she's anxious there's too many people around her you know what I mean she feels like she doesn't want to do anything stupid to mess her job up and you know what I'm saying she's telling people she's fine but she's basically lying to everybody and herself okay she's gained 150 pounds from just sitting at home and not doing anything and she don't she don't have the motivation to do shit she's got a fiance who's very good to her but she feels like she's gonna really be disappointing to him if she won't she go ahead and tell him like you know hey listen I ain't really who I say I am. So let me tell you something, okay, Mary. You, first of all, I don't really know about people's f fears and phobias and things like that. I know, I, I don't know them personally, meaning I have ne never met anybody that has a fear of certain issues. I know people that have OCD. However, I never met anyone that has a fear of doing stuff. However, there are a lot of TV shows that I have seen. There are people that don't like to go outside. Like they really scared to go outside. You know what I'm saying? So they don't go outside. And that's like, um, a fear as well you know what i'm saying a lot of people like that they're you're not the only one in the world so first of all let's get past that don't feel like you know what i'm saying you are not motivated or you lazy you know what i'm saying everybody has something going on in their lives to where it may push them back sometimes okay you all look at the bigger picture sometimes y'all look at people like oh beyonce jay-z kanye kim these people seem like they got all all of it together they seem like they got it going on and i'm not even gonna put kanye in that shit because we always we already seen how he had a fucking breakdown okay over a year ago however Sometimes when we look at people that have all this money, they celebrities, we look at their lifestyle and we feel like, oh my God, they got it going on. But deep inside and deep on the other side of the gate, these people don't. They got they losing a lot of time, meaning they losing their minds, they losing their sanity. They go through shit too, just as well as us people that are broke or ain't got as much money like that. Just let's take Mary, for instance. She's scared to go to work. She's scared to, you know what I'm saying, to be around people. It seemed like that's not even, it's, it's like on to me, this is just my opinion. It's like on a borderline of being scared to go outside because she don't even want to go outside. You know what I'm saying? Um, the first thing you have to do is you have to start with the motivation to get up and go out the door and take your ass somewhere where someone could sit there and talk with you. You know what I'm saying? This is the first thing you need to do. The first thing you need to do is get up, get out the house. And go speak to a therapist. Some people don't believe in going to therapists, but let me tell you something. If she feels ashamed and embarrassed to go and speak with her family, then who else she gonna talk to? You know what I'm saying? You keep shit bottled up inside all the time, you will explode. Trust and believe me. I exploded yesterday when I came back home from my long ass day. I went to get my daughter's hair done. I went and did something else. And when I came home, them dishes were still in the motherfucking sink. I went out, like went off. And I was on the phone with my husband when I went off because 
I get tired of saying the same shit and I get tired of trying to be a nice person, but I keep it bottled up and then I explode. And it's hard sometimes when you don't have really too many people to outreach to or to talk to. And then when you constantly keeping this inside, you feel like a failure. You know what I'm saying? Listen, Mary, I'm not a psychologist. I'm just giving you my personal opinion on how I feel that you should handle the situation. But in my opinion, I really feel like you need someone that is licensed to tell you how to live your life and not even to live your life, but someone who is licensed to be able to really, really help you. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hey, there are other kind of jobs that you can take on that don't even require your ass to step outside the house. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I have worked from home and I worked from home for like probably like three years and it was great for me, but you know, I wanted to get out into the real world and not even the real world because working from home is the real world too. But I wanted to be able to venture out in Arizona because I had just moved here. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I was tired of working from home. But there are means of, you know, finances. There's means of employment. You don't necessarily have to go outside to find a job. You can work from home. There are so many different places. And hopefully I'll remember and I'll post one below, the one that I worked for, because it's very good. It's a, it's a great company. It's very accredited. It's a very great company. But a lot of people do work from home for the these simple reasons. That wasn't one of my reasons. Um, my reasons was because I just wanted to be, you know, ready and available for my children when they needed me. But some people don't have that luxury. And I think like, you know what, for Mary's situation, I really think like that would be something for her to start off with, you know, because if you have anxiety about being around being people, around being around people, then that's not going to help you to go out into the real world. I could tell you all day, like, look, girl, Get off your ass and go find you a job. That's not going to help you nothing because you're going to be at that job for like three to four days and then you're going to quit. You're going to put in all that work trying to find a motherfucking job and then what? You quit? That's not going to help you nothing. The first thing that's going to help you is, for one, getting out the house and being able to go to a doctor's appointment and have someone to talk to and tell them how you feel. Maybe they can help you and put you on some type of anxiety medication. Or maybe you can get things off your chest to where you're not so nervous around people. You know what I'm saying? Speak about it. Talk about it. But I would never feel embarrassed. You know what I'm saying? If there are people that are willing to help you, girlfriend, then listen. Sometimes we don't want to take help from people because we may feel some type of way like, you know, like, hey, I don't want to take her help because I feel some type of way. You know what I'm saying? And some people do feel a lot better being able to reach out to strangers like myself and talk with them. That's cool, too, because it's like a biased, unbiased, you know what I'm saying? You know, opinion. My opinion is my opinion. I don't know you personally. I'm just going off of how I feel and what I do or may know. You know what I'm saying? But. I feel like if you don't want to speak with your family members about the help that you need, then and that is only because you don't feel comfortable. And I totally get that. A lot of times we don't feel comfortable about talking about our own issues with family and friends because family and friends, whether you want to say you ain't going to do it or not, we judge. We are very judgmental people. And why sit with somebody who's so judgmental? Like on some real shit, you could tell somebody in your family the same thing that Mary just told me, okay? And they go back and tell the other family member and then the other family member. And then you got people looking at you and talking about you and then you looking stupid or you feeling stupid because you didn't told them. You know what I'm saying? You confided in them. So I get that. It may not be a secret, but it's how she feel about herself. And she feels like some people may find it to be lazy, you know what I mean? Or stupid. I don't find it to be lazy and I don't find it to be stupid. I find it to be like you need somebody professional to talk with and to help you. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't just jump out the box. Like for me, listen, I never flew, flew on a plane until 2013. You was not about to get me on a plane. I don't give a fuck how hard you tried. I wasn't getting on a plane. I did it because I felt comfortable and I felt like it was time. All those years I waited, okay? but it was it was time for me everybody works at their own pace everybody works on their own time you can't just tell somebody to go do something and expect them to go do it especially if they ain't in the mood to do it or if they ain't ready to do it and in mary's situation i really feel like she knows she has this problem and it's good when you know that you have a problem and you know that you have an issue you know what i'm saying 
Then once you know that you have a problem and you know that you have an issue, then that's when you as the person need to address that shit. Get you some help. Seek you some professional help. There's nothing wrong with seeking professional help. A lot of times people be like, girl, I'm not trying to be going out there and getting no help. People looking at me, I feel, I feel like a crazy or weirdo because I don't went to a psychiatrist or a therapist. Let me tell y'all. I had to chew this gum because my mouth was so dry. But sometimes I would like to go see the therapist because I'll be having so much built up ang anger inside. And not even anger, but emotions inside because I don't I don't want to come across as like a mean, nasty individual, especially to my children. So I bottle up a lot of things inside and I don't say nothing because I really don't like to hurt anybody's feelings. Regardless of how I may come across on video or on real talk, or I might be a little bit opinionated or too opinionated to some, my intentions are never to hurt anybody's feelings. I would never want to hurt anybody's feelings. And when I hurt people's feelings, that just fucks with me, you know what I'm saying, emotionally, because I would never want anybody to hurt my feelings. And for me, I'm a really sensitive person um, to, some, to some degree, but I just, I feel like sometimes I need to talk with somebody and to get my built up aggression and emotions out because i know when i do go off it's like me having a temper tantrum like seriously like sometimes i would look at myself like you are a grown-ass woman why is you spazzing off like that on the kids like you are like you are two seconds short of stomping your feet and throwing yourself down on the floor like seriously it's a real shit so i understand when people go and speak to a therapist, you don't have nobody else to speak to. And it's not that I don't have anybody else to speak to because I talk to my husband on the phone for hours. You know what I'm saying? He'll talk to me. He'll tell me to calm down and shit. But sometimes we have to speak to people that are not like, you know what I'm saying? Any, any relative of ours or any relationship to us. And I really feel like in your situation, Mary, I really feel like you should be able to open up to someone that's professional don't sit there holding your thoughts back and feeling like damn i can't say nothing to anyone if you feel like you don't want to say anything to your family members or your friends girlfriend honey child find you a good therapist and open up and i guarantee you that you will feel yourself like a, a load lifted off of you somewhat you know what i'm saying that shit is a lot to bear when you have so much on you. She feels like, I know she probably feel really depressed about it. She, she's, she's gained a, um, weight. She's gained over 150 pounds. And she just wants to go back to feeling good about herself. I know how that may feel when you gain weight. Because I probably gained like 30 pounds or 40 pounds. It don't even matter. The, part, the, the, the point is that when we start feeling bad about ourselves, we don't want to do nothing. And I started feeling like that too. Like when I had gained that weight, I felt like, damn, who cares? Nobody ain't going to want me know how. So I might as well just gain this weight. Who gives a fuck? Oh, well, I'm just going to look like this. That's how I started feeling too. And it ain't even that nobody didn't want me because I didn't even care if anybody did or didn't want me. Because I didn't want their asses. I kind of felt like, you know what I'm saying? Not that I'm stuck in my ways, but I knew what I wanted and I, who I wanted. So I just felt like we ain't never going to be together. So why even care? And then a part of me was like, oh, well, he'll love me regardless if I'm like this. You know what I'm saying? So I just really feel like, you know, it's not a lazy thing. But what you need to do, the first thing you need to do is stop lying to yourself, okay? And stop lying to others. Because the lie is a lie. And you're going to just keep building it up and building it up. I'm pretty sure that if you say that your fiance is good to you, then he should be the one that you are able to talk to and confide in. And that's the first person that you should not lie to. You know what I'm saying? You know, the number one thing is to open up with to yourself. Stop lying to yourself first. Okay. That's the first thing you do. The second thing, confide in your fiance because you like, like you said, he good to you, but you've been lying to him all these years about, you know, your issue. Girl, Talk to him about it. Tell him how you feel. He might even have some type of advice for you too. You know what I mean? Maybe he'll come with you to your therapist or bring you there and sit and wait for you. That's moral support, sweetheart. Moral support. And what's best is moral support. Better is moral support. It's coming from the person that you really love. If you really love this man, trust me, and he feels the same way about you, he is going to give you that moral support. 
you know, it's like baby steps. Everybody got issues, honey. Don't feel like you're the only one out there. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure you are not the only one. There are people that don't even want to leave their house. And I'm not really sure how people start feeling like this, but it's, it is what it is. There's no way to, and no rhyme or reason as to why we should judge anybody for, you know what I'm saying, their fears. Shit, I'm, I'm fucking scared of mice. If I was to see a mouse in my house, I would probably pack my shit the fuck up and move out. That's how I'm scared. A fear, okay? A fear of them and some motherfucking roaches, okay? So, hey, we all got a fear of some shit. I know y'all probably like, bitch, you scared of some motherfucking roaches. You was born in the projects. Yeah, I know, but a bitch is scared of fucking roaches, okay? And I'm scared of motherfucking mice, so don't let none of them motherfuckers come around me because I'm a bitch is leaving, okay? So, yes, in my opinion, Mary, get you some help, talk to somebody, and find you a good at-home job, sweetheart. You can make yourself some income. I'm not saying that that income is going to put you on um, easy street, but it'll get you started, okay? So, let's move on to the next. Okay. PSA. This is somewhat long. Hi, April. I'm a subby from back. B BK. Um, excuse me, from BK. I love the advice you give the people. So... I said, why not tell you about my situation? Okay. So let's get into it. So I'm going to change up the names, okay? So my name is Yaya, and I met a girl about four years or so back. We're going to call her Shasha. At this store, not too far from where I live, she ended up getting me a job there. Long story short, we became close, and after a while, I realized how shady the job was and, and tried to let her know people at our workplace were funny style, as I like to call it. Keep in mind, at the time, I was about 19 and she was 22, so she's older than me. That's another reason why I gravitated towards her, because I thought... Since she's older, she'd be more wise. As time went on, I realized she isn't as advanced as I was, or maybe could be a little delayed when it came to certain things. Nevertheless, I didn't judge her or look at her any different because she's now my friend. At the moment, she was dealing with a man who had got himself into trouble and had to go away. But before this even happened, I told her numerous times to be smart about him because she would tell me things that he did that I didn't like. I also met him one time and from what I seen, he wasn't for her. I can read people very well. Fast forward, now he gets put away and I was giving my homegirl advice telling her, you know, she can be there for him as a friend, but I don't see the relationship going anywhere. She's young. She didn't even know him for six months. But who's so open? Why is she so open? April, you would have thought that man was her baby daddy or something. She even went as far as getting his name tattooed on her after knowing him for six months. She swore up and down he was the one and I just couldn't believe it. Eventually, I stopped working at the job and had to distance myself because she would only talk about him and her situations, which I find very selfish. Fast forward again, a couple months we, can re we reconnect and she has a new man and a new problem. Laugh out loud, girl. Keep in mind she was dealing with a dude on and off during her dealing with these other men. Now she wants to take him. We're going to call him Peter. Serious. Okay, cool. I'm all for it. But I realized this man only wants her for her kitty and no relationship. As a friend, I gave her advice and tried to spartan her up. Girl, why I met Peter in person and he straight up said to me, why you don't like me? I was so shook. I couldn't believe it. All the advice I was giving her, she went and told him basically that I don't like him. The following day, I told her about herself because I didn't like the fact that she went and told him I didn't like him. As a friend, I was trying to help you because I see that guys take advantage of you because of how she is. And at this point, I see that she has a little problem and might be special. She mean ride a little bus. So if I can see these guys, definitely can see it as well. Girl, we get into a whole argument and stop speaking. I cursed her out bad, but this was all in private. And she came out of her face to me first. So, hey, why this girl went and told my personal business to someone that I don't speak with? But, of course, it got back to me. April, I forgave her and took her back as a friend. Do you know up to this day she has the nerve to still speak about this man to me? 
every conversation we have revolves around him and how bad he's treating her. Wow, go figure, dumbass. Now I'm getting tired of it and I don't answer her calls when she calls me. But I post on social media and she sees it. At this point, I'm tired of it. I feel like she doesn't listen to me or listen to my little problems and only speaks about her man situations. She lets these guys sleep with her and they manipulate her. I'm tired of giving her advice. I don't want to just ignore her. I want to know what to say to her, April. Please help me. So, yeah, yeah. Met the girl Shasha at, um, you know, at the job place. They're a couple years in age difference. Basically, they became really good friends. But Shasha's issue is she just lets men walk all over her. She's naive to men. She probably let men run a good game on her. You know how men, they basically sometimes will tell you what the fuck you want to hear. You know, what's up, baby girl? You looking good today. I'm a wife. You. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that, girl. I'm saying I'm feeling you, baby girl. You're my one and only. I'm going to make you my wife. We're going to buy a house and have some baby together. Shit like that. She falls for it. I mean, I'm saying, though. If you know dude for six months, if you know a nigga for six months, why would you tattoo his motherfucking name on you? Like, bitches, let's wake the fuck up now. We not about to go tattooing motherfuckers' names on us after we known them for six months. I know y'all motherfuckers is like, bitch, you got your husband tattooed all over you. Yeah, I know. I know, I do. But it was not after six months, okay? It damn sure wasn't after no six months. However, the issue is with her friend. Now, when you got a good friend and you giving her advice and you telling her things, especially when they coming to you and they crying on your shoulder, like, oh, he beats me or just telling her negative shit about your man and how he treats you is not that great. And then you go and you give her advice about it or you just have these talks with her, you know, basically saying how, you know, I think this is how you should handle the situation. This is what friends do for one another. Don't mean that your friend that you didn't told all this advice to is supposed to go back and tell that nigga that you just helped her out with on advice. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't like you. Let me tell you something. It's so hard to have friends these days. And it seems like when you try to help your friend out with some advice, they turn that shit totally around and they either make you feel like, oh, you just jealous. That's why you're saying this. Or, oh, you just hate him. Or they go back and they tell the man. That's why, you know something? This is, this is how I feel. When I have a friend and she need man advice, I just try to stay out of it. Okay. And I'm going to give you a prime example. The girl who I started befriending here. The one who was supposed to take me to the airport and then didn't, you know, she got back with her ex. Okay. And she moved him back out here. She moved out here on her own with her kids and she moved him out here. All right. They were divorced. So she says, I don't really know if they was ever married. Anyway, he came out here. So she says to help her with her tummy tuck because she needed help removing her bandages. Either way. She started telling me straight off the rip about their relationship back in Indiana and now they're back together, et cetera, et cetera. It wasn't that great of what she was telling me back in Indiana, but okay, everybody deserves a second chance if you really do love the person. Now we become close, somewhat close. And she's crying to me about, you know, how he treats her now, how he don't help her with nothing. He don't give her no money for nothing, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, it's not even a good situation. OK, never said anything about him beating on her, but it's still a mystery, regardless of how you look at it. And um, long story short, she was just so depressed about it. She wouldn't get out of her bed. She just wouldn't really do anything for herself. She would say, oh, I'm going to come over and she would never come over call me up crying and whining all the time. And here it is. I'm giving her all this advice and telling her what she should do and how I know that, you know, sometimes, you know, I tell her, don't feel stupid because you're just an open hearted person and you do things because you're a human being. Don't feel stupid that you did something nice for somebody and he treated you like shit. If anybody should feel stupid, it should be him. Be him. I give her all this advice, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And she still just stayed with him and whines and cries, whatever. You know, after a while, I did get tired of hearing this shit. And I didn't even want to be bothered anymore because it's like, why the fuck are you going to keep telling me shit? And I'm going to keep telling you shit. And it's not even, you know, it's not helping you none. 
You still laying in the bed not working, not getting up and doing anything with yourself. So why am I even telling you anything? So long story short, she finally got rid of the nigga, okay? She got rid of him. He moved the fuck out, stole her TVs and everything. Okay, and she tells me all of the shit, stole her TVs right in front of her. She told the police he could just take it, okay? Now, weeks later, she's crying to me. I miss him. I'm so alone. Like, bitch, you just had, like, the worst encounter with this man. He stole your shit from you. And you caught him up at the school with some other bitch in the car, okay, after you done broke up with him. And you're crying to me about what? That's when I finally figured out, you know what, April? Don't give your friend, when you do find a friend, any more motherfucking man advice. Because these bitches be coming to you crying about the shit. And then when you help them out and you try to help them out, they either step all over your motherfucking toes like that bitch did, okay? And they don't even take your advice serious. And I know y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about, meaning stepping all over my motherfucking toes. Because the day before she was supposed to bring me to the motherfucking airport, she talking about how we should, re us women should unite together because we single mothers and we should look out for one another and help one another. Okay. And how she's so happy that I'm her friend, you know, cause she never had no friends before. And you know how I stuck it out with her and I help her with advice. And, but then the next motherfucking morning, bitch, you dissed the shit out of me. So what the fuck? Let me tell y'all something. Yeah. Y'all don't give that bitch no more advice. You don't even need to be around her. If that's what she want to do, meaning she want to fuck with niggas and you don't know, already gave her advice and she taking your advice and she throwing it out the door. Let that bitch suffer. I'm not trying to say be a bad friend, but you know what? Some people you just can't motherfucking help. Okay. On some real shit. You can try your best until you blew in the motherfucking face to help a bitch out. But let me tell y'all, if that bitch don't want to be motherfucking help, then that bitch just don't want to be motherfucking help. And Devin is a prime example, okay? I never like to call nobody the fuck out because that's not the type of person that I am. However, I'm very blunt and I have no filter. And if I don't motherfucking like you or you done did some shit to me, I'm bitch, I'm going to call your ass the fuck out. And yes, you are a whiny ass bitch to some fucking man who don't even want you. Like, if a nigga don't want you, he don't motherfucking want your ass straight up like that with no chaser straight up as for your friend shasha yeah yeah leave that bitch the fuck alone because if she was a real motherfucking friend she wouldn't have went back ratted you the fuck out and said you didn't like him if you don't like him that's not his business to know you were trying to help that bitch out but some fucking females just ain't even worth time or fucking time or motherfucking time or a headache all right straight up like you don't want to ignore her calls anymore, but you want to know what to tell her. Let me tell you something. Sometimes when we say shit to females or to women or to people in general, we try to be nice about the shit because we never want to hurt anybody's feelings. I know I don't. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of you people out there that don't want to hurt nobody's feelings as well. So when we give our advice or we saying something to someone for their own good, we try to say it nicely because we don't want to hurt their feelings. But sometimes you just can't keep fucking saying shit to be nice to a person. You got to give them tough love, like straight up. Your friend, you are avoiding her because she always talking about her boyfriend. She always talking about how bad he is to her. And what do you do? You listen. That's what you do. You listen to her and you give her advice. You know what? Sometimes you got to be fucking tough love to a motherfucker. They probably don't want to hear that shit, but you know what? After a while, you get fed up. And seriously, I got tired of fucking telling my husband, my, my daughter Tati, and my daughter Nay how whiny Devin is. I got tired of that shit. You know, I would say, I like, you know, she's such a nice girl, but you know, I, I wouldn't mind being her friend, but all she do is whine about this man and he treat her bad. She rained down on the calendar how many days this was. Like this bitch really was like, it's been 47 days. I was like 47 days for what? Since me and whatever his name is, then broke up. I don't know his name. So that's what I said. Like, I'm like, how do you know this? Oh, cause I wrote it down on the calendar. Bitch, did you really write that shit on the calendar? Like, God, the fuck, damn. And that's a form of me whining. Like, listen, I get it. Women go through shit. You hurt, you hurt, you hurt. But don't come to me one advice and then and 
I listen. All I'm saying is don't try to shit on me. But I will tell you this. I really felt like telling Devin ass, get the fuck over it already, bitch. He doesn't want you. He was no good for you. He was toxic. Now leave him the fuck alone. Wake the fuck up. Do some shit for you and your kids and do some shit for yourself, okay? God damn, get over this shit already. Sometimes I feel like just spazzing off on her and saying shit like that. So that's why I'm glad I don't fucking say nothing to her no more because I know me as a person. But yeah, yeah, let me tell you something about your friend Shasha. You don't want to stop, you don't want to avoid her by not answering her calls, but you want to tell her something. Sweetie, boo boo. You're going to have to let that bitch know. Listen. I love you as a friend, but I'm I'm tired of hearing you complain about this dude all the time. All you do is complain about it. You constantly telling me about it and complaining about it. Ain't shit gonna happen unless you fucking change the shit. You either gonna complain about it or you gonna do something about it. You either gonna deal with it and, and live with it or you gonna do something about it. That's what you need to tell her. Like, listen, I love you as a friend, but please, Shasha, stop coming to me complaining and complaining about the nigga. You either gonna do something about it or you gonna live with it. But as long as you complain, that means you're not doing nothing about it. I'm trying to help you, and I told you shit for your own good, but you're not even taking heed to it. So why even bother telling me the shit? Some people take that as like, dang. Some people will take it as, okay, the bitch really care about me. And some people won't. Either way, my opinion is like this. If a bitch keep coming to you about the same sob story over and over and over again, and... You know what I'm saying? She ain't doing anything to change it. Why the fuck should you keep sitting around listening to her? Like, listen, I'm not about to sit here and listen to your motherfucking little violin all day long. Like, seriously, I'm not going to do that. If you don't want to help yourself, there's no reason that I should help you either. Okay? Straight up. Me, personally, if that was my friend, I would have went off on her like you did. But if she's not going to help herself, then what the fuck are you going to do for her? Those type of people, you have to leave them the fuck alone. Sometimes you got to stop giving people advice because you're giving them advice and you're wasting your breath. Like, they're not going to take heed to that shit until they feel like it. Like, straight, for real? That's like telling a crackhead, stop smoking crack. They're not going to stop smoking crack until they're ready to stop smoking this crack. So why even keep asking them to? Or why keep lecturing them? Leave them the fuck alone and let them smoke their crack. And when they come to terms with that shit, they will stop being a motherfucking crackhead. Okay, let me tell you something. I love having friends, and I think that friends are the best thing in the world. Um, you know, I think that like friends are like the really the best thing in the world, and especially if you can find a good friend, however. When you help somebody continuously and they're not trying to help themselves and then they're dogging you out in the midst of it and putting you out there for the whole world to put you on blast, sometimes you have to leave them alone. Because if you have given them enough advice over time and you keep telling them and keep telling them and keep telling them about themselves and they're not taking heed to it, why are you going to keep continuously telling them? Sometimes I keep telling y'all, you have to walk away from shit. Like, I know that's your friend and shit, and you want to help her out, but listen, she ain't even willing to help herself out. You know what I'm saying? And the only time she's going to really get it is when something drastic happens. And though you're probably trying to help her avoid that shit, she's not going to. Because some females feel like you only giving advice and saying shit because you hating and you jealous. That's probably the main reason, okay? And sometimes you just got to walk away from it. Just let her know, I, you know what, Shasha, I really don't want to have to hear what you have to say about him anymore. I don't. Bottom line. She'll get it after a while. Because as long as she got you to vent to, that bitch ain't never going to do shit. She's just going to come back to you and vent and go home and get fucked by this nigga and get fucked, um, fucked and fucked and fucked. Not fucked physically, but fucked. Okay? So, I mean, I'm just saying. Y'all keep giving advice to people that y'all think is your friends and they're not trying to help themselves. I'm all for helping people. But when you don't want to help yourself, then there's nothing I could do for you. Straight up. So on that note, you guys, I know this was a short real talk, but I do have to go because I do have to go get my baby from school. You know, I don't want her to come out and she'd be like, where's my mother? 
So I love you guys. Stay diva and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up. I will see you guys in a soon to come video. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 Mm.